This major companies delayed or cancelled nearly 30,000 truck trips last week in the wake of violent protests and looting. That figure coming from vehicle tracking and fleet management company Netstar today. It says more than three quarters of trucks in KwaZulu-Natal were unable to travel last week. Francois Stolls is the uh, chief technology officer at Netstar. He joins me now. Francois, thanks indeed for your time. So we've seen the shortage of supplies in KZN over the past week, chiefly because deliveries could not get through the, the, the unrest there. Uh, and your tracking numbers tells us why. Uh, looking at the numbers, Francois, have you seen the scale of disruption to the trucking uh, before this? No, obviously, I think with the first lockdown, we saw a severe uh, drop in a uh, number of trips and uh, uh, deliveries and so on. But uh, I think this is unprecedented. Uh, we've never seen anything like this, especially in KwaZulu-Natal, uh, as you quite rightly said. Uh, in fact, uh, the first two days after the looting started, the uh, uh, movements of trucks in, in KwaZulu-Natal was down by 92%. I think it wasn't so bad in, in KZN. I think in KZN it was down by, by about 59%, uh, but, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it was uh, just a staggering, staggering amount of trucks that were parked. And these figures are important because it tells you that trucking in many ways is the lifeblood of economic activity, by mere fact that it just ships goods. And you had some very interesting analogies. You said traveling miles lost because trucks were stalled um, is equivalent of uh, going around the globe 15 times. That's a lot of trips lost there. No, no, absolutely. And I need to put that in perspective. You know, I think for this data analysis, we only concentrated on three of our big fleets. Mm. Uh, we specifically chose those fleets that sort of operate in the general transportation of goods and, uh, and also distribution to retail. So, um, so that, uh, that specific sample that uh, represented the 15 trips around the world is only coming from uh, 4,700 vehicles. So obviously that's just a fraction of the number of vehicles. So I think if you extrapolate that out to the full population of, uh, of trucks operating in the KZT and Gauteng area, the, the, those numbers will be even bigger. I'm wondering what your tracking numbers are showing in terms of the rest of the country last week when the looting was at its height. I mean, obviously, you concentrated on the N3 movement in KwaZulu-Natal. But, you know, we've been hearing that trucks were also stopped from moving when they crossed the Bait Bridge border up in Limpopo, simply because it just wasn't safe enough. Um, were other provinces also affected in terms of, of trucking movements? No, no, 100%. I think uh, for this specific uh, analysis, we focused on the movement of uh, vehicles between Durban and, uh, and uh, Gauteng because they were the most severely affected. Uh, we will be uh, uh, putting an analysis out next week on the rest of the country, but uh, I can just say, you know, sort of anecdotally looking at the data, it wasn't uh, as severe. There were some hotspots, uh, uh, but it wasn't as severe as uh, KZN and, uh, and uh, Gauteng. So uh, you, as Netstar, are saying today that your ground teams and helicopters have been supporting clients and law enforcement agencies throughout this uh, crisis. Uh, just paint a picture for us on, on how exactly do you give that support, especially in the coming weeks here, to uh, the law agencies? Well, yeah, so I think, you know, it... it um there's limited uh, uh, support that one can give. I think that most of the support that, uh, that our ground crews did, we have, of course, ground crews all over the country um, that typically uh, is focused more on the recovery of stolen vehicle and, and uh, you know, assisting hijacked uh, trucks and so on. But in this particular case, I think a lot of the focus shifted uh, um, to the uh, sort of armed support uh, or armed escort of vehicles into high-risk areas to, to still try and deliver some resemblance of, 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 uh, of deliveries. So, but uh, there were specific incidences. I think one specific incident in, 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 in KwaZulu-Natal, um, our uh, ground crew joined forces with the police and, uh, and uh, they managed to stop some looting, limited looting in that particular area. It was a, a sort of a event that went on until four o'clock in the morning, but they managed to limit it to one shop only. And uh, I think during that uh, exercise, about 30 people were arrested. But, uh, but, but generally, it was more around uh, uh, assisting, assisting with the uh, uh, safe delivery of, of freight where, where, where that was still possible. And just finally, before I let you go, what are your tracking numbers telling you about how the week started? We had a very disruptive week uh, a few days ago, last week. Um, are we moving back into a sense of normalcy as far as truck movements are concerned? 
Yeah, I guess that's the good news. You know, I think um, uh, um, if you look at the numbers uh, over the weekend, we were still sort of so. So just quickly, our data model was sort of looking at the three months prior to the unrest, uh, and quite in, uh, quite, quite interesting. The, the lockdown four had the minimal effect. I think we saw only about a two percent reduction in trips uh, with the large trucks. But uh, if we look at the data uh, over the last weekend, it was still sort of 50 to 60 percent down for, uh, compared to the period prior to the unrest. But on Monday, we saw a, a sort of a, a vast recovery. And uh, on Monday, they were almost back to normal. And when I looked at the data yesterday, um, we were actually 22 percent above the normal. So I think not only has it returned to normal, there's some catch up taking place. And hopefully, um, you know, the catch up will help to, to, to restore the situation to normal again in the near future. Yes, hopefully it does stay that way. Well, uh, Francois Stoll's Chief Technology Officer at NetStar, thanks very much indeed uh, for talking to us.